Well, hey, Crossway friends. Uh, so Chris had uh, asked to interview me um, to just kind of hear a little bit about my UK trip uh, to share with the community. And um, I'm kind of reversing the table a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to interview Chris um, because I want you guys to hear about what's going on in our community. Um, so I'm really thankful for UMC um, because you guys are incredibly missional, like locally you guys are always looking for ways to sow into the community, and it's beautiful. We like to talk about doing that. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> so um, you've been getting more connected with the elementary. Yes. And it seems like they're kind of like in a place of desperation a little bit for the church. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you can maybe share a little bit of what's going on. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's no surprise in the last two years we've had some challenges <laughs> in our world, in our communities with COVID and um, being socially isolated and um, kind of shut down uh, from the world. And last year during our Easter time, um, we, we knew schools were already struggling. I mean, just because it's everybody was struggling. Yeah. But um, we asked a question, just reached out to the school and said, hey, how, can we do anything to serve you? Is there any holes that we can help fill? Is there any areas of lack that maybe we can help lift up? And uh, last year they said, yeah, school supplies. We always had this big push at the beginning of the year for school supplies. Mm -hmm. But then by the time Christmas comes along, the cabinets are empty mm. and there was, you know, there's this lack. So, you know, little Johnny needs a book bag in December. Well, the closet's empty. So yeah. they're like school supplies. And so we did that last year. Um, same thing this year. I mean, we're still coming out of this pandemic thing, and um, it's been rough and challenging for so many people. And again, the schools have to be feeling this just as much as everybody else. And so uh, we asked the question again, what is there an area that we can help in? Is there something going on? Is there um, a hole you need filled? And this year was tennis shoes. They said, we have the okay. shoe closet. Again, some comp local company, I don't remember who it was, donated like 100 brand new pairs of shoes at the beginning of the school year and then by the time December came the closet was empty again so it's like again there's this great push from the community at the beginning but then there's not maybe this constant uh, communication with the schools to say well, you know what's December and January and right. February look like so school supply or shoes and then they said uh, they do this climber club or they're uh, providing little outfits for kids to dress nice to build respect and confidence uh, you know Guys with ties, girls with pearls, they dress them up and mm. they teach them to hold doors open for people. But wow. And they have lunch with a mentor. And so they're also looking for mentors to come and have lunch with these students on a, a Tuesday of every month. It's, I think it's the second Tuesday of every month. And they're doing it every month. And there's always a different topic like leadership or man, table manners, like just common things. And what they found was these kids would wear these outfits that they were just kind of like rotating and washing at home. But these kids felt so confident and, and proud mm. in these nice outfits that they asked, can I take these home? Can, wow. I, can I wear these beyond just Tuesdays for this lunch? Yeah. And that's kind of heartbreaking if you think about it, that a kid didn't have that and, and felt so more proud when he had that. Right. And confident and... Um, I mean, it's kind of like our calling with God. Like, when we know God loves and calls us, we feel so much more confident yeah. when we have this a strange kind of relationship. We're like, yeah. who am I? Well, and that love has an expression. So, like, mm -hmm. clothes do matter. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, it's a gift that we give them that actually does something for them emotionally and mentally. Yeah. That's good. Well, even, like, <clears throat> one of the principals said, you know, like, this one little boy came in with his sister's shoes on that were three sizes too big. And I mean, we all know what it's like to have self-image and self-worth and, and maybe lack of that, or we are not confident in how we look or how we dress or, you know, whatever. And to think about a little kid mm. who's just trying to get to school yeah. has to put something on it will potentially make them feel left out, made fun of, mm. obsolete. And I mean, shoes are important. I mean, they help us walk. You right, know? playing at recess yeah. becomes a challenge. So if they're yeah. too big or too small, or I mean, if they're too tight on the kids' feet while they're taking a test, I mean, there's so many yeah, right. factors yep. that could come into play here. That why did little Johnny fail his test? Well, maybe he was worried about his shoes hurting, yeah. or he had um, sores on his. Right. I, I'm just throwing it out right. there. There's we don't know, but clearly they have a need for shoes. So there is some of that going on. So tell us about what's like the what's kind of the goal. I know there's something leading up to Easter that you're. 
Yeah, so uh, we're calling it a walk in their shoes. And the idea was, um, you know, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. <clears throat> you know, we have these brand new schools in Urbana. They look really nice off the side of the road. Right. Very clean, very brand new, fancy. Um, and they're just kind of there and they look good. But we don't know about the hurt, the pain, the, the lack of shoes, yeah. <laughs> whatever that's going on uh, inside of the 800 plus kids who are attending there. And speaking with uh, Melanie Anders and Christopher Dorsey, who's the guidance counselor, I mean, they kind of painted the picture. Um, it's, you know, it's almost three out of four kids that come from some disadvantaged mm. home life, whether that's addiction, abuse, lack of resources. Uh, a parent absent. A, an absent parent, whether it's, you know, prison, divorce, um, whatever. Yeah. Death. I mean, right. grandparents raising kids, aunts yeah. and uncles raising kids. So, and those are not all necessarily like, you said three out of four. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Wow. And so that's not all, that's not like an automatically fail for kids, but that those are big disadvantages. That's a major detriment. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a walk in our shoes is like let's let's remember that there are real situations around us um, that again that are out of sight of our mind. Let's put ourselves in those kids' spaces. Um, and I thought a lot about how um, when Jesus, I mean, we're coming up across the east, coming upon the Easter season, and and the the cross that Jesus carried for us. I mean, I think it was roughly like. 2,000 feet from Pontius Pilate's palace to mm -hmm. Golgotha where Jesus hung on a cross for all of us. Yeah. Um, well, I walk in his shoes, mm. you know, uh, to put us in that perspective of the cross that he carried for us. Um, but didn't know, you know. You know he wasn't wearing shoes, right? <laughs> he probably wasn't wearing shoes. <laughs> I walk in his sandals for his Air Force Ones, right? Um, yeah, but a walk in his, uh, yeah. his pathway, um, then he was carried by his disciples and buried. But as we know, the, the good news is that three days later, the tomb was empty and that he yeah. was back walking in our shoes again. Oh, come on. That's yeah. good. So, uh, <clears throat> so details, um, yeah. we're looking for shoes. Uh, they need to be brand new. Yeah. I mean, they said, they said they'll take gently used as well. Okay. Um, and then like what sizes? Yeah. So size was one through 13. Um, you know, obviously, if you can't afford new shoes, they'll take whatever, but we're encouraging new shoes just because we want to do right. the best yeah. we can yeah, absolutely. for, but that's not saying old shoe, used shoes are not bad, it's good, don't hear me wrong, okay. but we want to, we just want to do it the best we can, Absolutely. you know, yeah. and so financial donations, um, at the end of this, we, you know, we're going to cut uh, a check and go shopping for them because donating funds to schools is kind of tricky. Um, there okay. is, um, they can't accept money but yeah. they can accept physical donations so if we wanted to give money mm -hmm. we could give money and then you guys will yes. use that to buy supplies. and then we could all go shopping yeah. and we could all make this big delivery trip and, and let's just like fill up their shoe closet for the next like three years is what i yeah. i would love to see that's um, good yeah and so the culminating event of this is easter sunday right yeah so we're going to do an easter sunrise service uh at freedom grove park which if you don't know where that's at that's actually towards the school south 68 yeah uh, there's wing bar and then there's <clears throat> the freedom grove park which has the 9 11 memorial in it right and then the county building's kind of behind it we're going to have a stage uh we're going to have breakfast we're going to have about a 45 minute you know message worship um but to, to be out and uh, under the open sky, and we're inviting the community. The other churches are partnering with yeah. us, and we want to just worship together. Uh, but we would love to just stack a bunch of shoes and pray over those, and, and oh, like man. you know, and just envision, you know, God walking in their shoes and us walking in their shoes, and, and knowing that they're going to be <laughs> resourced a little bit more. <laughs> you know, obviously this is not going to fix everything. We know that. Yeah. But there also is the other component of prayer. Um, that we're really focusing on here is that this there is physical resources that are needed here, but yeah. there's spiritual resources that are needed here, and the, the teachers are asking for that. Yeah, they're asking for prayer. Yeah, that's amazing. That so the school is mm -hmm. the school wants the church to be the church. Yeah, they want us <laughs> to be actively engaged in prayer for them, uh, getting prayer needs and requests. Um, wow. And they're look and people to go in the halls and walk the halls and mentor kids. I mean, so it's like. Yeah to truly walk in their shoes, to walk in their hallways, to yeah. see where they sit and learn and, and see how the teachers teach. I mean, they're, they're teaching 25 plus kids for, you know, it's a hard job uh, yeah. for what, six and a half hours a day. I mean, yeah. and we trust our teachers. We send our kids there, you know, we, all these, we love our teachers, but then like, 
I think we forget <laughs> yeah. that they're just there doing their thing and they need us. Yeah. They need the church. Yeah. They need Jesus. That's good. <laughs> So also, I just think it's cool um, that, so you, uh, you, the UMC right now is doing a series on prayer. Yes. And yeah. what's the Pope Francis quote that you... Yeah, so he said um, to, you pray for the hungry, then you feed them. That's how prayer works. So good. I love that. So we were just talking about how, like... <clears throat> you can't do anything without first praying, mm -hmm. but also so much of the time prayer involves action mm -hmm. that Jesus invites us to be the embodiment of yeah. of our intercession. So I love that, that you guys are doing that in the midst of this series. Yeah, so. we're trying to <clears throat> focus. I mean, because again, we all need to grow in lots of different areas and different ways. Some of us are more inclined to be action focused. Some of us are more uh, inclined to be contemplative and prayer focused yeah. and but the, we want to marry the two. Marry the two, right? It's yeah. like when heaven invades earth, um, it's not just going to be us hanging out. <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and and for us to move mountains, like Jesus says, He's not just going to accept us to go over there and pick it up. Yeah. So there's going to be action when the Spirit moves, and there's going to be prayer when action happens. That's so good. That's good. Well. Uh, I just want to um, honor you, Chris, yeah. by giving you this, <laughs> this shoe. I'm going to walk in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's it's real, man. And and I think what I've learned in this whole process is just never stop asking questions. Never, don't assume things are okay, you know. We love our town. We love Urbana. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful little town, a great little community. Um but there, there is a, an evil one in our world who has other plans besides God's goodness. Yeah. And so we have to be aware of those things. We have to be proactive uh, and not assuming that, yes, God is good, but he's requiring us to bring that goodness. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, yeah. and when there is goodness, that means there's also darkness. And we have to, we have to intercede, intervene, and, and jump in there and, and light it up. Yeah, God wants to partner with us. Yeah. It's good, man. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. <laughs>